Right, here's a cool little demonstration of what's called the Bernoulli effect. Um, this is a can of compressed air and this is a foam ball. Uh, let's check out what happens. I'm gonna tip this a little bit more diagonal. So you can see that as the ball tries to fall out of the slipstream, um, it's not able to. Let me lean this even more to the side. There we go. So what's at play here is you have the stream of air flowing like this. As the ball tries to fall out of the stream of air, it will reach a place where there's slow moving or not moving air below the ball and high fast moving air above the ball. That fast moving air generates a region of low pressure. And so what happens is there's higher pressure below the ball where the air is moving slowly and the ball will tend to get pushed back up into the slipstream. So that's called the Bernoulli effect. Associate fast moving air with low pressure. All right, so another cool way to see this effect is just by taping a piece of paper on the edge of a table like this. And what I'm gonna do is use the can of compressed air to just blow a stream of air across the top of the paper. What you notice is while that's happening, the paper is actually drawn up into the stream of air. Associate that fast moving air with low pressure. Underneath the paper would be slower moving air or higher pressure. And so the paper is pushed by the higher pressure air below toward the region of lower pressure. So gravity, of course, is trying to pull the paper down, but the air molecules below, which are at higher pressure, are, are pushing the paper up toward the region of lower pressure where there's the fast moving air across the top of the paper. So another cool way to see this effect is by hanging a couple cans of Rockstar from strings. Um, these cans build up in my recycle bin and it started a legend amongst my students that, you know, Dr. Pierce drinks 10 a day. Um, kids, it's aggregate, one or two a day, um, but it is good stuff. Um, what I'm going to do is send air in between these two cans um, with the, um, the can of compressed air and we'll see what happens when we shoot air in between. So what I'm going to do is shoot the stream of air kind of at you right between the, right between the cans. And what you see when I do that is the cans are actually drawn toward each other um, instead of spreading apart. Um, so again, if we start with the cans apart, you can see there's a gap in between. And now I'm gonna shoot air in between the cans. And you see instead of flying apart, the cans are actually brought together when I shoot the air in between. So again, we see this um, effect of fast moving air generating a lower pressure region. So there will be slower air on the outside, higher pressure, and that brings the cans in together. Um, when people first see this, they'll often think that when you shoot the air in between the cans, that that should actually kind of push them apart. Um, so it's a little counterintuitive. It's uh, exactly the opposite happens. When you shoot air in between, it draws the cans in together.